Good morning. Welcome to Christ United Methodist Church uh, again for worship, this online worship. Today, I want to share just a little bit about what's going on here at the church. One of the things that we're involved in is the Golden Celery Food Drive Challenge for Crossroads. So far, we've taken about a thousand pounds of food down to Crossroads, many, many cases of uh, juice, which they asked for. We've received a couple thousand dollars uh, also, and I'm trying to figure out whether to, to buy food with that or to just have that donated straight to Crossroads. Um, I think they know what they need a little bit better than we do, but uh, the last time I, I asked Jess uh, down there at Crossroads, she said they needed juice boxes, and I thought $1,700 worth of juice boxes? That's a lot. So we'll, we'll figure that out in the coming week and a half or so and uh, get all that down to them. So thank you so much for bringing uh, food to Crossroads and, and uh, helping the people downtown there. Hi, I'm Kelly Carpenter, Children and Young Family Ministries Coordinator. And this week... Our Bible story is David versus Goliath, and that can be found in the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 17, pages 331 to 333 of the Deep Blue Kids Bible. Now, in this story, David, this kid, defeats this nine-foot-tall giant. It is an amazing story, only using five small, smooth stones. It is an incredible story. And some people didn't think that David could do that because he was such a little kid. And how could this little kid go and defeat this great giant? And sometimes people don't give little kids a lot of credit, but kids are amazing and do, and you guys I mean girls, you do amazing things. When Travis was younger, he noticed that there was a, not a spot for a ramp at his school for his power chair. So he was able to talk with the principal and get a ramp put in. And I looked up some really cool inventions by kids, and I'm pretty sure you're going to know a lot of these and probably enjoy a lot too. So one of the things invented by kids was earmuffs. Now, we don't wear them right now. In the summer, it's pretty warm. But in the winter, you might have your hood on your coat, and your ears still get cold, so you put the earmuffs on. And they go on your ears and keep them warm and have a nice cool strap over the top. Did you know that trampolines were invented by kids. Pretty cool stuff. Let's see, other things include a snowmobile. Wow, Christmas lights, who knew? And my personal favorite this time of year, popsicles. Those yummy frozen treats to help cool you off on our hot summer days, invented by kids. Pretty amazing stuff. Well, I'm wishing you a great week and we're gonna say a quick prayer. Say, dear God, thank you for kids. Thank you for kids' inventions and little things doing great things along the way. Amen. Have a great week. So today, um, I want to start with just a, a word of, of prayer, and uh, then we'll, we'll move forward. The world belongs to the Lord, the earth and all its peoples, love and faith come together, justice and peace join hands. I invite us to pray. Oh God, may we find ourselves humbled in the presence of mercy. May we find ourselves grateful in the presence of beauty. May we find ourselves in awe in the presence of wonder. And may we walk always with kindness through our world. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. This morning I want to read from 1 John chapter 3, actually chapter 2, uh, the, the end of chapter 2 and the start of chapter 3. Now, I don't know how it is that you read your Bible, what you're looking for. I think uh, what we're looking for has a great deal to do with how we read the Bible. And, and, and what we make of it. Some people, some folks want to read the Bible and uh, they, they, they look for the, the, the sinning part and, and how we 
uh, can be uh, fixed in a way from sin. That's, that's one way to read the Bible, I suppose. It's not the way that I read it, but some people do. Some people look for uh, the words of hope, and, and the, the words of hope come in different ways. For example, some people, First John, if you read it, you will hear the author really be hopeful about Jesus' second coming. And so that's, that's certainly one way to read the Bible, to read the New Testament, to uh, await that second coming. Uh, sometimes they said that it would come on the clouds with trumpets, all that kind of thing. If you read the book of Revelation, Jesus comes roaring back on a war horse. Doesn't seem like him to me, but that's what some people want. For me, and, and maybe for some of you, we read it in a, in a different way. Uh, words of hope and inspiration uh, come differently. And so this little piece that I'm going to read has some words of hope that have been for me important. And uh, I hope that um, I might uh, suggest them to you and, and see what you think about these words. It starts like this. And now little children abide in him so that when he is revealed, we may have confidence and not be put to shame before him at his coming. That's where the author of first John is talking about the second coming. If you know that he is righteous, you may be sure that everyone who does right has been born of him. See what love God has given us that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure. That's the pericope, the little piece of scripture that I'm going to talk on this morning. And I'm going to narrow down to that one line. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. Such good words. Well, this week I got an email from uh, an old youth group member. She was youth group member when I was in Arvada, 1995, 1995, 96, uh, in that era. I think she was a junior or senior at that point in time. She was going to go off to college uh, somewhere, and, and uh, I didn't know what to make of her. She was a very sweet person. But um, I didn't think too serious. She never struck me as a serious person. So we have been Facebook friends. You know how that goes. And, and we, we've talked to, to each other through the years uh, a little bit. Uh, we, we, we shared happy birthdays to each other and th those kind of things. Nothing serious. But about a year ago, she decided to become a chaplain. And so she went through some training. And she was in Houston, which is where one of the hot spots of the COVID pandemic is. And so for the last year, she has been in Houston at a hospital training to be a chaplain. In her training program, she was required, she will be required to go to a seminary of some sort to get some religious instruction. And so she sent me a note and, and asked me, uh, what I thought of ILF, which is where I went to school and did, at the University of Denver. And so I, I talked to her a little bit about ILF and what I know about it. And it's changed a lot since I was there in the 1990s, but uh, I still think it's a great school and, and certainly one that will give her good background in religious instruction. So I, I was thinking about this line, what we will be has not yet been revealed. And for Danae, what she was when she was a senior, junior and senior in high school is certainly different than what she has become. 
I think all of us can relate to that story. No one in their right mind would have thought that I would have become a pastor when I was in high school, college, even 10 years after. It just wasn't going to happen. That, that wasn't in the cards. But you never know. And so what we will be has not yet been revealed. Now, some of us are in the second third of our lives or the third third. And we may think, ah, everything that is known about me and what will happen to me is already done. It's, it's already, the cards are already played out. But I have a feeling that there is still more yet to be revealed in you, no matter what age. I've seen people come to the edge of death and visited them in hospice and be surprised and in awe about who they are as they move through that process of death. So what we will be has not yet been revealed. Now, recently I've received a couple of uh, articles about church and how church will be different after this pandemic. One, uh, the, the articles are fairly negative, the ones that have been sent to me. Uh, one article said that 39% of churches will go defunct after this pandemic is over. I don't think Christ United Methodist Church is one of those 39%. We are well situated with a great building, good people, of financial stability, and really a future that, while we don't know exactly what will happen, certainly I, I have uh, positive thoughts about what we will be and how it is that uh, we will be what hasn't quite been revealed yet, but we will work it out. Now, there are other churches who were struggling before the pandemic hit, and as the pandemic goes along and people move away in some way, shape, or form from the church, they will struggle, and there'll be some churches I know that won't make it. But I pray and hope for those churches that somehow the people will gather around them again in the days and the months to come. So hopefully that is the case. When I think about our, our country, that line, what we will be has not yet been revealed. It is apropos, don't you think? What we will be has not yet been revealed. I think every time we have a new uh, cadre of government officials we don't know what will happen with them, how they'll react to the different situations that will arise in the world and in our country. And so uh, the future is open. And that's what I, I like about Methodism. That's one of the things that I love about John Wesley was that he wanted us to be sure to know that the future is open in God's world. Now, there are other uh, denominations, Calvinists, for one, who think things are planned out. There's a predestiny about things, but not with Wesley. Wesley railed against that in the time that he was writing uh, a number of pamphlets about that against the Calvinists uh, in Europe. And so what we will be as a country has not yet been revealed, and that gives me a little bit of hope in these days. And finally, when I think about the world and how the world has changed just in the time that I've been alive, and I think, uh, I think about some of the people in our church, like Lorraine Dale and Bill Silver and Olivia Metz, all close, and Ted Stathakis, all close to 100 years, and how it was in, when they were teenagers, in the, in the teens, in the 20s, uh, and how the world has changed since then. And can you imagine how the world will change for those who were born now uh, and if they live to be 100 or 110 or 125, however long people will live in the future, how the world will change for them. What we will be has not yet been revealed. 
Those are the words from First John. And I don't know about you, but those words give me hope. And so in these days, when hope seems fleeting, I hope. That's not just a play on words, but I hope that you will take those words to heart. What we will be has not yet been revealed. Amen. See you soon, friends.